Hi, I'm Dr. Kyle Montgomery, and in this video we'll be going through a problem related to the use of uh, mesh current analysis for solving specific uh, circuit diagrams. Here in this case we have a circuit um, composed of a couple of independent voltage sources, a couple of, or a few independent voltage sources, a couple of independent current sources, and a resistor here. Um, the values for each of these are given. And what's also given already in this problem is the specific mesh currents that we are going to go through in solving, which I've indicated I1 around this loop here, I2 around this loop, and then I3 around this loop. Um, and so we're going to go through the process of solving for each of those mesh currents and then also solving for the uh, actual branch current I, which is given uh, as the current through this uh, uh, for, or from this voltage source right here in the middle path. Uh, so go ahead and take a minute to uh, copy that down in your notebook, um, pause the video maybe, and then we'll come back and get started with uh, getting into the solution with uh, I1. Okay, so now when we start to examine the problem here with uh, how we can get to each of our specific branch currents, uh, we can make note of a couple of things. Number one is that we do see that we have a current source here that's tied between these two mesh currents, I2 and I3. So as we've talked about, uh, the idea of the super mesh is something that we could apply here, and we know specifically that this current source is going to relate those two, brand those two mesh currents, rather. Um, also to note is that we already have uh, one of our mesh currents actually defined for us, right? Because you see here that we have a current source in this branch linking uh, from this node here over to this node down here. Um, and that is the same as the branch current I2, which is this two milliamp source. So that immediately actually tells us what that branch current I2 is. And we don't even really need any to, to solve anything specifically. We can just say right out off the bat that uh, this will be equal to, has to be equal to two milliamps because of that current source that's sitting right there. So now that we know what that branch current I2 is, and we know we have this current source that relates I2 and I3, we can just come up with a very simple expression to uh, describe those two um, currents related through this three milliamp source. So that might be something like, let's say I2 is traveling in the same direction as that current source. So we could say I2 minus I3 because it's traveling in the opposite direction. The difference of those two mesh currents would have to then equal this independent source current, which is the three milliamps. Now again, knowing that we already know that I2 is two milliamps in this case, um, you can see we can get to a very uh, simple solution here where I3 is simply going to be equal to uh, negative one milliamp. All right, so let's put that down here. Minus one milliamp. Okay, so that's great. We already have a lot of progress with what we need to do. And actually now we can see that because we already know the two, uh, two of the branch currents, I2 and I3, um, really the only mesh current equation that we need to worry about uh, writing and then solving is one around the mesh I1 to incorporate that variable and then be able to solve that uh, given the fact that we already know what I2 and I3 are. Um, so let's do that next. Okay, so now in, in writing our equation for our mesh uh, around I1, uh, so this is what we'll do right here. Um, I'm gonna start uh, maybe down in this bottom left corner and we'll work our way around. Again, the mesh current equations that we're writing are um, uh, similar to a KVL loop equation. And so we're looking at all the voltages that uh, we come across in the path of what we're doing here. Um, so first we see that we come across this uh, 10 volt source which is a voltage rise. I'm actually going to indicate a, a voltage rise as a positive quantity. So it'll be our 10 volts. Um, then we'll have a voltage drop across our resistor here if I follow the direction of the current. So this will be a minus. Um, the actual current flow through my resistor here is going to be this current I1 minus the current I3 because you see that the current I3 is also imposing a current there in that resistor. So it's going to be the difference of those two multiplied times this two kilo ohm resistance. Okay, um, and then we see we have another voltage drop here uh, across the six volt source, and which will be also minus six volts, and this is all equal to zero. So again, I've written this qu equation um, using the. Uh, uh, the relative setup that any voltage rise is actually a positive quantity, any voltage drop is a negative quantity, and that's where we uh, get from there. So some simple math here. Let's say we have uh, four, uh, 10 minus six would be four, and then minus our two K um, 
times the I1 minus our I3, which is one milliamp, so it's gonna be plus one milliamp will be equal to zero. Um, now pay attention as you're kind of working out from here. Remember that we're always interested in, our, in these prefixes. So kilo and milli are going to modify those particular values. So just be sure you're consistent in how we work those out. Um, and then ultimately we should get down to a value of I1 being equal to one milliamp specifically, okay? Um, okay, so then the last part of this problem is again looking at what this branch current I is, where I is indicated uh, in the upwards direction through this six volt source. And as hopefully you can be able to write an equation from here to, to understand what that branch current I is as it relates to the two mesh currents that are influencing that branch current. Um, here we see we have I2 going in that same direction, so that'll be a positive. And then at, whereas I1 is counteracting that, so it'd be minus I1. So taking the values again that we've already figured out, uh, two milliamps for I2, minus one milliamp for um, I3, and we should come up with a, a value here of one uh, milliamp. I'll put this over here. Um, okay, yeah, sorry, I was confusing my uh, numbers here, but uh, two milliamps minus the one milliamp is I2 minus I1 there. Okay, so that uh, is now gives us all the all the solutions that we need in order to now uh, fully solve this circuit. We have all the currents, the branch currents, and um, that we would need to get to the final answers. From having all the currents, then we could figure out all the voltages across each element, and from there, if we were really getting into it, uh, thinking about the power dissipated or the power delivered by each given element, and so on and so forth. Um, but here again, the main things to note is there were a couple of uh, really key kind of shortcuts that were important in the very beginning that instead of just looking at a problem and immediately trying to write mesh equations around every given mesh that you have, you want to kind of have a look and see are there certain elements in here that'll make your life a lot easier, such as, you know, the, immediately we could recognize that that mesh current I2 had to be the same as my source here. And then from there, relating I2 and I3 through this source really saved us a lot of time and effort uh, as it were. So I hope you enjoyed that and uh, learned something and hope to see you in the next video. Thank you.